I'm Spike and in this short video I'm going to run you through how I organize a commercial stock video shoot, a collaboration, and I'm going to talk you through pre-production, the shoot, post-production, editing of the video files through to uploading to Blackbox, who I'm using for collaborative work to go to the stock agencies. I've been prompted to prepare this as a result of uh, discussions with John Neff from The Crafted Shutter, and I provide links to his site below. Whilst I've been making photographs since I was seven, I expanded into uh, video production a couple of years ago. For photography, I've been a long time user of Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop and it seemed natural to progress when I moved into video to add Premiere Pro to that suite. However, I peaked on Premiere Pro when uh, on one particular project I was editing a five minute book promo and uh, that was taking more than an hour to render on my fully loaded Mac Mini and uh, after it had crashed some 55 minutes into the rendering process on more than 20 occasions, I cancelled my Adobe Premiere Pro subscription and incurred a $120 penalty in so doing from Adobe. I decided to try maximizing my video production using the um, 30 US dollars now, uh, I think it's 40... $6.99 here in Australia, uh, LumaFusion app for iOS on my second generation 12.9 inch iPad Pro. It handles the 850 megabits per second DCI 4K 59.94 uh, frames per second footage like a dream without any need for making proxies. It can handle multiple lines of this high-grade footage, and um, it was this process that John suggested I make a video and we could talk about that part of my production process, which may be interesting to others of you out there. I'm still relatively new to the stock video work, so currently I like to uh, organize my commercial video shoots on a TFP, the traditional time for print basis, because there are a number of models, actors, dancers, hair and makeup artists out there who are all keen to have some high grade still images for their Insta famous portfolio. And we come to an agreement that I can also shoot stock video, which I do using Blackbox on a collaboration basis. So they have the opportunity to sign up and get a 20% share of the proceeds of any future sales through Blackbox. So what's the deal? Well, when working with an individual model, I normally offer them eight to 10 uh, post-processed uh, high-grade JPEG images for their copyright free use in their social media account of a proviso that they acknowledge me as a the uh, photographer. And I let them choose uh, normally from uh, a collection of 20 or 25 images. These I let them have via my Smug Mug account initially watermarked. Uh, ones they've uh, chosen which ones which I've I've sort of initially processed. I pop them back into Lightroom and Photoshop and post process and then that lets me um, return some images to them again in another copy uh, in another gallery within SmugMug so that they can access those for their um, downloading and use in social media. For the stock video I offer a 20% share of any future sales through um, the agencies that the Black Box Guild currently deal with. I introduce the uh, talent uh, to the Black Box Guild and discuss the system with them. This is done in some of my preliminary correspondence and within the model release and the contract, which is again all detailed in the preliminary correspondence with them, I give them seven days to register with Blackbox and confirm to me that they are registered and a collaborator. So I can then go in and include them as a sharer when I'm providing my metadata in the post-production stage before finally making those available on the market. Obviously, to keep everything above board and manage expectations, uh, I always send out some very detailed background to myself 
uh, so the model knows who they're dealing with, give them access to samples of my work and my portfolio, um, and detail very clearly what uh, I'm expecting from a shoot, which is that I'll, um, I'm looking to get some commercially viable stock footage and what they can expect from the shoot in terms of my guiding them as a model and also providing them with some images that they can use for their social media. I also explain the background to Blackbox uh, and how I agree to the 20% um, share that uh, they can have as a collaborating talent within the black box process. I also make sure I send a draft of the model release form uh, so there are no surprises on the day and the notes that I include in that uh, specify the, um, the agreement in terms of what I'll deliver, what uh, they need to deliver in terms of registering for black box etc. So with that I use um, easy release on my iPad so that on the day of a shoot we can incorporate their photograph, uh, we can both sign and we can have a witness on site and then at that point of confirmation at the start of a shoot I email that to myself and to them simultaneously so that we've all got our documentation in place and when we can just focus on having a good time uh, developing uh, some good images. My biggest uh, collaboration to date was for a large behind the scenes of a Vogue type um, bridal empowerment shoot where we ended up with five models, seven hair and makeup artists, a stylist, a photographer, three videographers, me as one doing behind the scenes, all of whom provided model releases. We had uh, property releases from the venue we used and also from the owner of the bridal gowns. So I ended up with 18 releases uh, and about 500 gigabytes of uh, footage. So I'm still playing through that and starting to upload some, uh, some of which uh, has already sold, which is very positive. I'm going to talk you through my workflow from a recent collaboration uh, with Sophie, who you've already um, seen. She's a young fashion designer in Sydney and we agreed to meet uh, at one of Sydney's beaches uh, for a late afternoon, early evening shoot to catch golden hour. We met in a local cafe, uh, which gave us an opportunity for a couple of the early images and um, also video clips uh, with permission from the, the venue to film there. And then we um, headed out and did a number of outfits in a number of different locations. But in the cafe, it was a chance to build repartee, uh, to get to know one another, and to complete the model release form uh, before we started a process and got someone in the cafe to uh, be witness to that process. So everything was above board. On this particular shoot, I mainly used my Glycam for stabilization uh, because it was some run and gun type uh, video clips that we were doing in various locations using the uh, Canon 16 to 35 f4 L lens, the image stabilized one, uh, as well as um, using my 85 millimeter uh, f1.4 L again image stabilized lens. So uh, I changed lenses and obviously took the camera on and off the Glycam as I swapped from. Uh, video to photo, which is a challenge in itself to be uh, functioning between the two and making sure you're popping into um, the manual settings for video, different uh, cropping on my 1DX, it's a 1.3 crop, uh, compared to the crop, no crop rather, on the full frame sensor uh, for the photographs. Photographs were all shot in RAW, um, we rattled up about 350 of them uh, during the course of a shoot and the video um, on this occasion I shot it all at 59.94 frames per second uh, so I could if I need to slow it down in post so I ended up with um, I think 42 video clips totaling around 95 uh, gigabytes. Back home the first stage is to offload the footage uh, I go straight into Lightroom um, for the, um, the images straight from the CFast 2.0 um, uh, reader, USB uh, free reader, which is uh, very fast. Um, I download all the still images in Lightroom and then I uh, open a file uh, and just copy over 
all the video into a separate folder. So I ended up with, um, as I say, 42 video clips. Um, these don't play particularly well on my Thunderbolt display from a Mac Mini. They tend to be uh, a little bit, um, a little bit choppy, but um, um, they they form the basis for what I'm going to do in the next stage. I say back home because when traveling, uh, I had to come up with a solution. Last year I was um, filming away for a month and I ended up getting a WD My Passport um, Wireless Pro, uh, four terabyte, which worked pretty efficiently. Uh, I was holding out for a Narbox 2.0, but that has only recently been produced. Slightly slow with a WD on wireless transmittal, uh, not always totally stable, but it was fine to get the data off nightly from my um, collection of CFAS 2.0 cards. More recently, I picked up the Lacey DJI Copilot Boss 2 terabyte. Uh, I like this. It has a, a lightning connection, so it's a solid connection into the uh, iPad. Fairly efficient. Uh, both those, of course, have got inbuilt batteries and um, they work as a traveling solution. Obviously, the WD My Passport Wireless Pro and the uh, Lacey DJI Copilot Boss are very 2018 tech and have potentially been superseded in 2019 on the latest uh, iPad Pros and uh, iPad OS with the ability to drop in um, your SSDs straight onto the iPad. Actually, that doesn't particularly help my workflow with the um, size of the files that I'm pulling off my CFAS2 cards. And the uh, benefit for me is managing the projects on my Mac to start off with, uh, storing, backing up onto um, my my eight terabyte hard drives and then just working with what I need on the uh, iPad Pro project by project basis. I did try an Apple powered lightning connector uh, but returned it because it couldn't handle the bit rate of the CFAST 2 cards. So in terms of file management it's important to uh, actually have a folder that I put the video clips into on the Mac Mini and then I airdrop that whole folder, in this case with 42 video clips in it, over to the iPad Pro. That with 95 gigs takes, in this example, 45 minutes to do the transfer, which is fairly good in, uh, in my reckoning for 95 gigabytes of data. After airdrop has finished, you're given the option of opening in files, iCloud or elsewhere. I choose files, then on my iPad, then LumaFusion, then user media, because that's where I'll find it when I open LumaFusion. Then when I open LumaFusion, uh, I can look in imported media, I can see the Sophie Beachy folder and all the video files are accessible there. And I start by opening a new project. So I'll open LumaFusion and open a new project based on the frame rate. And given that I don't necessarily want to slow the footage down in the first instance, I'll select project title, BB Sophie uh, 01, a frame rate of 59.94 and a frame aspect ratio of 1.9 to 1, which is IMAX Digital or DCI 4K. I then go to imported files and select Sophie Beachy. I'll select a video file, a video clip uh, and trim it and then drop it into my timeline. What I'm looking for are clips that match the Black Box Guild notion of quality. In other words, they're professionally crafted in every way, technically sound, unique, rare, surprising, beautiful, scary, thrilling, inspiring, happy, sad, funny, or illustrative of a concept. They look for animals, people, places, things, and then cross-reference the aesthetics like beautiful, emotional, cute, happy, sad, old, young, new, inspiring, and rare, etc. Next, I do any color correction that's needed, which is usually minimal with the 1DX. Uh, maybe knock down the brightness, lift the shadows. Uh, the goal is to make the clip pop, and I usually add an inbuilt LUT. 
I check for framing, but no reframing is needed in this instance, and I don't need to vary speed or reverse for media. Having checked that I'm happy with the clip, I export at 4K at 150 megabits per second, and LumaFusion renders in real time. Then in the Files app, and here I've added four more clips by way of example, I airdrop back to my Mac for uploading to Blackbox after checking that the clips still look good on my large Thunderbolt display. Blackbox recommend using FileZilla for file transfer protocols, uh, but I was concerned with security from freeware and instead used Transmit5, which is a paid app uh, in um, OS X, and I've been very happy with it for my glacial internet speeds. It took uh, over three hours to upload these five clips, but Transmit5 did it perfectly. And we're talking here of, I think, 1.2 gigabyte. And here they are in my black box workspace to add model release, the model as sharer, the clip description, and the keywords for metadata. Ideally, I prepare these whilst the clips are uploading, uh, and if I haven't, uh, sent a batch overnight. And I use pages, uh, a word to summarize the metadata, and then in numbers uh, or Excel, I add them as a CSV file, so it populates the black box workspace. I then check each one for a final time uh, and submit for review. And that's my process. Uh, here they are pending review and hopefully uh, they'll be accepted by firstly black box and then by uh, picked up by one of the stock agencies uh, in the coming days and will be on the market. And I've got a lot more clips to, to work on. Well, that's it. I hope you found this from shoot through to stock video production um, video helpful and informative and thanks for watching.